In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. But, uh, good to see you. All right, you got your Bibles? Sweet, let's go. Genesis uh, chapter 1, we're going to be in verses uh, 6 uh, to 8 today, and we're going to be discussing the second day of creation. Um, if you're expecting a big epic kind of thing like the last uh, couple weeks, um, sweet, I'm glad you're here. I mean, or, or especially like if you brought somebody and you're like, you got to come check out my church because they've just been like doing crazy stuff, um, I, you know, I, I, it's gonna be good, okay? It'll be good. It'll be good, um, and uh, and it's it's good to see you, it's good to see all all all, all, all you people. Now tonight um, we are gonna begin our our Advent series. Uh, we're calling it um, the Arrival, and tonight we'll begin by talking about Christ, uh, our hope, and so we'll we'll light the first candle, um, which is kind of fun. It's kind of fun being a revival center and doing something somewhat uh, traditional, and so um, and we're doing that just to. Um, to trigger any sort of religious spirits um, that uh, that disguise themselves as revivalists. <laughs> so, anyways, that'll be <laughs> not, not you know. And if you got your a religious spirit, you know, certainly this isn't your home church. You're part of a, another church, but um, but we're <laughs> we're, we're glad that we're we're, we're glad. Uh, that, that, that they hear. Now, we are going through the book of Genesis, chapter by chapter, uh, verse by verse, and uh, I just wanted to stay the course because, uh, you know, th this series is going to take some time, I especially at this rate, we're going to be in uh, Genesis for the next 80, 100 years. Um, we've been doing, like, literally a word per week, okay, and, um, uh, and this, this is, this is going to be good. It is, it is going to speed up. We're going to start getting into some of the characters and stuff. It's, um, but uh, I'm taking my sweet time because this is actually my favorite passage um, in the Bible. Actually, I've, I've spoken more times out of, out of Genesis chapter 1 than I have out of any other passage uh, in the Bible. I just, I love, I love Genesis 1. I, I do, and especially just the first few, the first few verses. I feel like it's just so prophetic. It reeks of Christ. It's so redemptive. It's so beautiful. And it's so invitational. And, and um, so that's going to be good. We're going to go through Genesis. Um, we're going to keep doing it even on Sunday mornings. Um, we'll take a couple, uh, a, a couple weeks off when we get at Christmas and, and New Year's. Um, and then on Sunday nights, we'll, we'll, do, uh, we'll do a special Christmas series with the, with the, with the arrival. Uh, when we're finally done with Genesis, then we're going to actually go through the entire book of Revelation, chapter by chapter, verse by verse. So we're doing the very first book of the Bible, and then we're going to study um, the last book of the Bible. And then when we're done with um, Genesis, I'm sorry, when we're done with Revelation, um, I'm going to retire and buy a bass boat. <laughs> Maybe get a place in Austin. So here we go. Um, the book of Genesis is, is the book of, of beginnings, written by uh, Moses. It starts off with in the beginning, or as the Hebrews would say, Barashit, okay, so in the beginning, in the first epoch of time, in the first um, period of time, this is not a point, this is a period of time, um, before there was anything, there was still someone. And so in the beginning, everyone say God. Yep, so there he is, there he was, he is, he was there, he is here, he's in the future waiting for you to arrive, okay. So, Bereshit Elohim, so not just God, but mighty God, okay. There's even a Hebrew word, a, a derivative of Elohim that actually means to worship. So, in the beginning was mighty God, okay, and what did God do? God created uh, the heavens and the earth. So, Bereshit Elohim Bara, to create, okay, he creates the heavens and the earth. And that becomes like the synopsis of the verses to come, okay. And then we start getting into the creation account. So last Sunday we began with light, what, what God did with light. Um, and, and then today we're going to look at the second day of, of creation. Now, altogether it took seven days to create 
the heavens and the earth. Now, with each day, um, it's going to begin the same way. Okay, with, with each day, it's going to begin the same way. It's going to begin with God speaking. So uh, each day begins the same way with God declaring a thing, okay? God would speak, and, and it would say, and God said, okay? At the end of each day, you're going to see a pattern. At the end of each day, it says, and there was morning, and there was evening. Now, that came from last week. That came from, uh, from the, 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 first, the first day. So let's talk about what we talked about last week, okay? So in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now, where did God create it, okay? He created it in, in the Tohu Bavohu, on the coast sec. He created it in this place of the chaos waters. What are you drawing? I'm drawing chaos waters. Okay, I'm going to draw something. Now, when I draw chaos waters, I like to draw nice unhappy lines. So I'm going to draw like I'm doing the, the, the prophetic Bob Ross this morning. Nice. I got my big after, you know. I, I, and so, sometimes I just like to just do a nice unhappy line that goes right right through the middle. There, there he is. He's, he's, he's sad. He's sad. He's in the Toho Vavohu in, in the Coast Sec. And, uh, yeah, and I'm just going to do a nice little chaotic line right there. And, and the chaotic line has some whiskers. Okay, all right, good. Um, now, here we go. And now, it says that right in the middle of the Kosek in the darkness, right in the middle of the Tohu Vavohu, um, which, by the way, um, this looks like a big problem, okay? Um, and the problem here is that the word Tohu Vavohu, which, yes, in the Hebrew, rhymes, um, it means unordered. Hopefully I spelled that right. And uninhabited. So here's this spot, okay? It's crazy. It's, it's nonsensical. It's what a lot of our homes look like, especially if you have um, four kids and a puppy. It's just... <laughs> looks kind of like looks kind of like Seattle, okay? <laughs> Just looks look, looks looks wild, okay? It looks like if you if if if, if you if you're not familiar with the Tohu Vavohu or Kosek, if you're not familiar with any of these dynamics, then obviously you don't have cable news, okay? What you can do is you can just turn on uh, uh, any any 24 hour cable news, and 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 you're gonna see just uh, this this place where it's, it's unordered, but it certainly is certainly is uh, habited. So we are living in this place. So wow! Now it's funny because. Um, uh, Facebook, okay? There's a lot of spiritualists on Facebook. Some of these spiritualists even call themselves Christians because they believe in Jesus. But they take on a lot of new age, a, a lot of new age philosophies, a lot of ideas. And the idea is this, that if you want to have peace, then you've got to figure out how to, how to get out of here. To get to here. So the idea is, is that if you're living in this place of total chaos and turmoil, there, there's no order, it's just, wow, it's just wild, it's just dark, then, then, then obviously you, you aren't the problem, everybody else is. So what, what you need to do is you need to get the negative people out of your life, you need to get the negative situations out of your life, and since life is all about being happy, which is contingent on happenings, you need to become your own master manipulator and manipulate people and situations so you can get out of the chaos, out of the tohu vavohu, out of the kosek, get out of this place and get into this place of empty-mindedness, into this place of zen, into this place of, you know, you got some whales mating in the background. With this, with this, with the, with the ocean crashing, <laughs> with it, with a nice voice in stereo. <laughs> Your life does not actually suck. <laughs> Your life is amazing. 
don't think about the cable bill. All right, so it, like, anyway, it's like, to so get out of this place and create, you know, empty, empty yourself of, this is, this is, this is two-thirds of all the world religions, is, um, is in order to find peace, you, there can't be chaos. The problem with that is the Bible. The problem with that is that the chaos and the darkness become the ingredients by which God creates. So if you rid your life of all the drama and all the dramatic people, if you rid your life of all the chaos, if you rid the life of, you just cleaned your pantry out, and now you've got no salt, pepper, flour, eggs, oil, or vinegar. Problem is, you're looking at it the wrong way. You're looking at it through the world's filters and not through God's filters. Why? Because when you read, in the beginning, God created, where did he create? He created, there's all this chaos and all this stuff. And, and, and where's God? Let me get, I mean, I'm going to trade out my eraser. And where is God? He's right in the middle of it. It says, and the Spirit of God, which is the Hebrew word ruach, 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 ruach. ruach. What is it? It's the breath of the breath of God. It's actually another translation for ruach. Is actually the the presence of God. What is the pre- what is the presence of God mean? It means God is present. So here we have God not trying to escape this place. We have God, it, it says, hovering right in the middle of it. And he's actually brooding right in the middle of it. Okay? Now, on the first day, and God said... Let there be light. And what does he do here? It says, and there was light. And he separated. Light. And he separated the darkness from the light. And he called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And from this point forward, with each day, God says, he speaks, he creates, and then we see the rhythm, okay, the rhythm of what? See, on day one... What did God do? He came into the chaos, into the environment that was unordered and inhabited. And before it can be inhabited, it first has to be ordered. So for the first three days of creation, one, two, three, he brings order. And for the last three days before he rests, what does he do? He inhabits the place that he brought order. Isn't this amazing? My God. <laughs> it's like, wow. I told you it's awesome. So on day one, yes, God creates light, right? It's a light bulb. Ding! Light, yes. But what does he create there in, 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 in this place? He creates the very first realm, which is the realm of time. And we see a cosmic cadence that is put into effect. We've got this realm of time which brings order to an unordered environment. If you're going to bring order to your unordered life, you should start where God started. I don't know how Oprah says to do things. I don't know how Deepak Chopra says to do things. But I would look no further than Genesis chapter 1 and look at Yahweh. I would look at Elohim. I would look at mighty God. Okay? (laughs) Yep. 
If there's one reason why the kingdom of God is not seeing God's kingdom come, it's because we're unaccountable for the very first area that is like the Wild West within our life, and it is the realm of time. If you want to begin seeing his kingdom come and his will be done. And I know you do, especially if you're, if you're part of SRC. I mean, that's, that's why you're here is you're, you're actually crazy. And you think that you're created in the image and likeness of God. And you believe that God's get, uh, going to do crazy cool things. And if you've been here for any amount of time, you're already doing crazy cool things with the king. Okay, that, that's, just, that's just who you are. And, and, and some of you, you're hoping that this is true, and, and it is, because we, we gave you eyewitnesses. We gave you witnesses today. We gave you legal witnesses, a ton of them, that gave you recent testimonies of the power of God at work within their life. Okay? And so just declare, my God brought order to time. Therefore, I have authority... In him to bring order to time. You have authority and dominion over time. Yes, and, 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 and you start listening to people like um, Joshua Mills. You start listening to people like Troy Brewer. You start listening to people like Katie Souza, where all of a sudden they believe that the body of Christ in Christ has authority over time, and then all of a sudden you begin going through your timeline and seeing God's redemption come. That's awesome. That's beautiful. But there's also something called a day timer. I was listening to something amazing. Uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a guy named uh, Miles Monroe, Dr. Miles Monroe. And he passed, he passed away a few years ago. But I, 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 I never really listened to him back in the day. But I, I've been listening to him uh, over, over this last year. And that guy has some very interesting revelation. But that guy's the only guy that I've ever heard talk about tithing our time. He talks about, we're not just supposed to give, you know, because he says you can't really God, give God really anything because it, it, it all belongs to him anyway. But we should take all of the ingredients that God has given to us, we should take a tenth and offer it as an offering to the Lord. And he says, why do we give something to God that he doesn't need? Because God is teaching us management. He's teaching us what it means to be a dominion steward. So if we're going to learn what it means not just to operate in American Christianity where we get to call ourselves a Christian if we go to church once a month <laughs> and vote Republican. <laughs> you know, and don't drink alcohol unless it's wine with communion. There's all these different rules and all these different things. Once we actually believe that we're in a kingdom with a literal king and that he wants to awaken us to, the ide to, to our identity, that we are part of a royal priesthood and that we've been called and created fashion for such a time as this to be a dominion steward, then we're going to have to see that we will give an account for our time. Listen, don't, don't you dare use your time time just because somebody else is taking advantage of your time or telling you what to do during your time, has God called you to do what you are doing or are you people pleasing? Are you man pleasing? The very first realm, the very first day is day one where we come to our time and we take responsibility for our time. We realize time is short. I'm here today. I'll be gone tomorrow. This is like a blade of grass. I don't have time to live my life just to make you happy. I'm sorry, you're not my God. I was not created to worship you. But you're a pastor. You make people happy. No, I don't. Listen, I love you. And I hope you're happy. But I'm smart enough to know that I cannot make you happy. So I don't try. My commitment is to love God and to love you and to do my best to point you to the light that is not Darren, it is Christ Jesus, Jesus the seed, Jesus the hope of glory, Jesus the revealing one, Jesus the one that will come and say, in this place, let there be light, and there was light, there was rhythm, there was cadence, and God said, and he blessed it, and it was good. We have to rule and reign and that begins with time. So let there be light. And then what happens on day two? Everyone say day two. 
This is awesome. This is so cool because we're seeing what God is doing. He's declaring. He's, he's speaking. And on day two, this is really interesting. It's, it, um, and it says, and God said, okay, let there be rakia in the midst of the waters. And let the rakia separate. Everyone say separate. Weird. Didn't that word separate come up last week when he separated night from day? He separated, right? What did he do? He, he divided it. He carved it. So check it out. He says, in the midst of the waters, and let the rakia separate the waters from, uh, from the waters below to the waters above. Verse 7. And God said, he made the rakia separate the waters which were under the expanse from the waters which were above the expanse. So it was so. Verse 8. And God called the rakia heavens, and there was evening, and there was morning, behold, the second day. Now, I know what you're thinking. Like, Darren, why are you trying to be fancy dancing with saying, rakia, rakia, rakia. That's not what my Bible says. My, 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 Bible, my Bible says. How many of you, your Bible say expanse? Okay. How many of you guys, your Bible says atmosphere? How many of you, your Bible says the firmament? Yeah, what is this, what is this rakia? Okay, this is very, this is very interesting, this, this word that, 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 Moses, that Moses wrote. So um, here's, here's what this, this word means. So we have light and we have day. That's established. Day, sorry, and night. You know, you know what I'm trying to say. Like, what language is that? Okay. I know, I know, impressive, right? I do have an art class e course. <laughs> Rakia means dome. Interesting. If you read it like that, you have, and God said, let there be a dome in the middle of the waters. And the dome separated the waters. What does that mean? Now you have water above and water below. And what do you have in the middle? Space. Atmosphere. A womb. Now David would say in Psalm, David, where do you say it? Psalm 148.4. What's above the heavens? The waters. David would talk about the waters over the heaven. In fact, the word heaven in the English, you look that up in the Hebrew, you're going to find the word waters in the word heaven. Other interesting thing is, we'll see this in a couple weeks, in Genesis 1.17, it says that God set the heavenly bodies, the sun, the moon, and the stars. And, and where does Moses say that he put the sun, the moon, and the stars? Inside the dome. It says he put it inside the rakia. What does that mean? At this point in time, you have the seas below and the sky above. And above the sky, the waters. Now, we'll get into, in a few weeks or a few months, a few hundred years, we'll get into the flood. We'll get into Noah. And, and the flood. And we're actually going to see the language about the rakia opening up. What does that mean? It means the dome opened up and let the waters into the earth. Now what's interesting is, we'll get into this. This is a, like a sneak preview. I'm just kind of geeking out for a second. If you, if you look at the timeline of humans... And you're looking through all these different guys, and I'm not going to put it up because this is a future, future week. Uh, you look at how long people were living at this point in time. You can just look at the timeline of how long people are living, and you immediately see when this protective barrier opened up. 
you can see when the flood was according to this timeline. Why? Because here's a question for you. How many of you would say growing up that you were sheltered? Okay. Okay, awesome. How many of you, you were like, <laughs> nope, you weren't sheltered at all? Okay, third category. How many of you, your parents thought they sheltered you? <laughs> you weren't sheltered at all. Yeah, awesome. I went to a, I went to a private school. I, I, I was schools, and I, I graduated from, from, from a private school. And, and several years after I graduated, I was asked to be on a, on a panel to come back and, and, and talk. And, um, and it was several years later after Jesus had, like, redeemed me and, and forget. Like, it, it, was, it was when there were, when, when I was nice, Darren, okay? <laughs> um, and I believed in Jesus again, which is all, which, which was great. And, um, and the guy that was moderating the panel, he, um, he, he, he started kind of making fun of this thing of being sheltered, okay? And, um, uh, uh, and I remember, like, you know, like, and I've made fun of that myself, you know, like being a sheltered kid and, like, only listening to Carmen and, you know, all, all DC talk and wh whatever else and, like, you know, and all, all this stuff. Uh, uh, I never went to movies. I went never all this stuff. I, I, I don't know. But he was talking about being sheltered, sh being a sheltered kid and this. And all of a sudden, I, I felt, like, grieved because it was almost like this thing that if you were sheltered, you weren't relevant, it was almost like this, 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 this idea that if you, were, if you were sheltered, that you were lacking some sort of street smarts that would, that would give you the chops to be able to cut it in life. Okay? Now, again, the problem with that is the Bible. Why? Because we see that Jesus is um, our shepherd, but he's also our sheep gate, and we are his lambs. And I don't see anywhere biblically where Jesus says, little lamb, go out there and play with the wolves. And get, get your butt chewed right off by those wolves. And you might, you might even almost die, but that's what children do. That's what children lambs do. So every little lamb needs an opportunity to rebel and be stupid and, and just go out and just, and, 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 and see if you can get yourself killed, uh, uh, you know. And because um, and, you're going to need that. That's going to make you, um, that's going to make you relevant. No, no, no. We see that God is, in Psalm 91, called our refuge place. He is, he is called our shelter. And that when you get saved, when you give your life to Jesus, um, he comes and he speaks into your life, let there be rakia. Let there be a place of refuge. Let there be this place where there's waters above and waters below, but right in the middle is the sweet spot of God's redemptive, secure, and safe presence. And so we see this on the second day. What did God do? He created the canopy. He created the, the center, so the place of atmosphere, the place of life, the place of, of the ark, that there was, there was a storm everywhere. There was water, and Noah and his family were safe in the Rakia. And now let me just say this, that I believe that the true church of Jesus Christ is a Rakia. I believe it is a place of refuge. It is a place of shelter, and I believe it has a door. I believe that door is Christ Jesus, and I believe that that door is wide open. And just like Noah and his family built the ark and they preached repentance, I believe that this is part of the great commission that we, the church, are to be uh, building our arks of refuge while letting people know that the door is open open and you do not have to live your life in the chaos. You do not have to live your life in the anxiety with all the shame. And where is Arakia? It's right smack dab, right in the middle of it all. That God comes into the disorder and he speaks order. And on the second day, he says, let there be a place of refuge. And for the church... The church is to be a safe place of refuge. And that means that in the Rakia, there is not to be financial 
manipulation and coercion. Why? Because that is not of the king. That is not of his kingdom. That is not of his righteousness. So we as the body of Christ need to be able to discern financial manipulation and to hold people accountable to say, get that stuff out of here. Why? Because it is our job, job as the body of Christ to be submitted one to another, to make sure that these places of refuge, that these domes that the Lord is releasing onto the earth are actually safe. There's not to be sexual explo exploitation, manipulation, sexual abuse within the church. That is wrong. Okay, and, 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 and any leader that would, that would justify sexual manipulation or exploitation in leadership, that is unacceptable. That yes, we all got sexual brokenness in our lives, okay, but, but we do not have an excuse to justify sexual sin, especially when we, our sexual brokenness in sin is bringing harm to others that have been looking for the Holy Spirit, looking for a Savior looking for in, 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 in a safe place. It, it, it breaks my heart to know that people are in the to, tohu vavohu and in the kosek and, and, they, and they're promised a place of refuge and they come into the place of refuge and they are abused and, and they are shamed and they are manipulated. That is wrong. That is not right. And the Father is the Father he so loves that in this time he's bringing order to the church. He's bringing order where there has been disorder. He's bringing light where there's been darkness. Why? Because the shelter will be a true shelter. This place of refuge will be true. And good. it doesn't mean if you, if you sin, yes, you can be forgiven, you can be restored, and, and, all, and all of that. But, but the culture of darkness and the culture of sin will no longer be tolerated in the church. Why? Because God is taking us back so we can go to the future. He's taking us back to day one and to day two. This is why we're doing this series, is because if you want to know what's in the future, we have got to go back to the past. Why? Because when a generation forgets its origin, it'll abdicate its destiny. When a local church forgets its origin, it'll abdicate its destiny. When your family forgets its origin, it'll abdicate its inheritance. When you forget where you've come from, you might be deceived into believing the lies that the culture tells us that frames out what we call success. In the kingdom of God, success is defined by is there order and is it inhabitable? If you've been hurt in the refuge place, I'm so sorry. If you've been hurt by shepherds that were promising you a place of safety, I'm so, 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 so sorry. If you were taken advantage of by pastors, teachers, prophets, apostles, those claiming to be such ones, I'm so, so, so sorry. And if you were part of places where you were, you joined because of its origin, but it got way, way, way off track. And now it's not looking like anything, like what the Father framed out in its origin. I am so, so, so sorry. But I'm so, so, so glad that you are here. Why? Because the very fact that you are here is telling me that you have chosen to not become bitter, but you have chosen to become better. And if you walk with a limp, I am so, so, so sorry. But I'm willing to walk with you. Most likely you'll be willing to walk with me because I got a limp as well. And if you'd say, Pastor Darren, it is my desire to create safe places. It is my desire to create places of refuge. It is my desire to, to, to be an ark. We can invite people out of the storm. We can invite people out of the darkness. Then, man, this is, this is the right place. And this is the right time because Seattle needs rakias. It needs creatives. It needs people that are willing to show up and to speak up. It needs people that are willing to brood in the darkness and wait for the Father to speak.
It was unordered. It was uninhabited. He brought forth this realm of time. He brought forth this realm of space, shelter. And how did he do it? He showed up and he spoke up. Everyone just declare the word decree with me. One, two, three, decree. That word decree can be translated cut, carve. That word decree can be translated separate. Every time God spoke, there was a separation. Every time God decrees something, a carving takes place. That every time God spoke, we get to see it communicated twice. God spoke, there it was, and he separated and he brought identity. You have permission to bring division, to bring separation. You have permission to carve as long as it's in the darkness. As long as it's in the chaos. That every time you speak the word of God in the darkness, it'll bring forth a carving. It'll bring forth a separation. And it will call the future order of all things into the present. This is the power of a prophetic priesthood that knows their authority, that their tongue has been given to create. When we wake up to the reality that the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead, that the same spirit... The same breath of God that brooded over the chaos waters is now brooding inside of you. It begins to awaken you to the possibility that God could do it again. He want, I believe God wants the Genesis 1 again. He wants the Genesis 1 again. But this time, He wants to do it through partnership with His sons his daughters. Let there be light. Separate. Let there be a dome. Came in. Separate. So practically, we're working real hard. Our team, a lot of them are here in this service. We're working real hard. Why? Because next fall, what are we going to do? We're going to create a rakia for children. We're going to be starting a school next year. Our goal is pre-K to, uh, to grade 8. Why? Because we believe that as parents, it is our responsibility to provide a shelter for our children and to train them up in the ways of kingdom theology and practical principles so that we can begin to change the trajectory of our country, not through sermons, but through service, strategic service through our children. We're making a long-term commitment. That this earth will be better because there will be order that is legislated through a children that emerge, that rise and shine and realize their glory mandate. We're going to create domes, create domes, create domes, create domes, create domes. Places of safety, places of order. We're going to bring order. We're going to create domes. Within your marriage, you're going to need a rakia. Within your own, what are you? What are you? You're a temple. You're a temple of the Holy Spirit. What are you? There's a, there's a dome inside of you. You're created to host the King of Glory, the Ruach, Christ Jesus. We're going to need light. going to need the environment, and we're going to need to protect the environment. You can stand. You have your communion
cups. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread and he broke it and said, this is my body that is broken for you. Take and eat in remembrance of me. Let's partake of his life, of his breath, his wafer. Jesus, that your body was broken so that our bodies could be mended. Thank you, Lord, that you suffered so that we could be redeemed and restored. Thank you, Jesus, that on the cross, you didn't just die for us, you died as us. We receive your body into us. Lord, we ask that your bread of life would expand and increase within our hearts. Lord, we ask, Father, that your Holy Spirit would come and govern over our emotions, over ourselves, over our DNA. Lord, we ask, Lord, that your, bo that your body, Lord, and our bodies, Lord, would release life and light and government in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. In the same way Jesus took the cup. And he said, this cup is my blood. Take it, drink it, receive it into you. And do this often. For as often as you take this bread and you drink this cup, you are declaring a new covenant reality within your life. Let's partake of the cup together this morning. Let's just give thanks. Thank you, Jesus. For your blood, Lord. Thank you for your blood. Release it to us. Release it to us, Jesus. Thank you for your blood. Thank you for your blood, Lord Jesus. I see the blood of Jesus. Uh, so maybe maybe there's a couple of you, one or two, I don't know. But I see the blood of Jesus just coming inside of your body right now, and it's and it's um, and it's uh, it's breaking generational chains of witchcraft. And it's doing it easily, just snapping chains of, of witchcraft. And, and for those of you that that you've been underneath some sort of torment. Um, to do with witchcraft that maybe you've been involved in, maybe you flirted around with it a little bit, but really it was like you were born into uh, uh, an environment like the occult kind of environment, into like a, a pagan kind of kind of thing. And um, even as you took communion, I believe that the that that the light of heaven is coming inside your body right now. It's coming inside of your soul right now. Yep, 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 yep. I see it coming down, and then I see it spreading out left and right right now. Left and right. Yep, 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 yep. Left and right right now. Yep, 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 going up and down. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I declare connection, connection with Father. Connection with Father. Yep, 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 yep. yep. And there's something about like even your heart and your kidneys and, and, and um, just being restored right now. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, Lord. 
Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. There's even somebody here, and you, you came here with the intent of cursing this church and even cursing me. But the Lord just deposited a seed into you without you even realizing it. And there's just a seed of hope that, that just, that's just uh, that's come inside of you. Because you thought you could receive communion, and it wouldn't affect you. But you have, you have just received the seed of his blood and his body, and it's gone inside of you. And I just declare hope over you right now. I just declare the love of God for you right now. I just declare the love of God for you right now. Jesus loves you so much. And you have received something into you that is powerful and effective. And I believe that the witness of Christ Jesus is coming inside of you right now, right now, right now, right now. And the light of heaven inside of you is going to reveal truth inside of you. And it's going to expose every lie of the enemy right now in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Yep, 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 yep. There's somebody here and you, um, we're gonna, we're, you've, you've been planning on doing something really dumb and you know what's dumb and, there, and, it, and, it's, and it's full of anticipation. I, I, it, it's, uh, it, it's, it's almost like you're, you're, you're pregnant with disaster. And I declare a sabotage. A sabotage. I see the truth, the, the, the truth of the Lord coming to sabotage the plan of the enemy. Because it's almost like the enemy impregnated you with a disastrous plan. And you know it's disastrous, and yet it's, it's full of expectation and anticipation. And this morning it's been spotted on the ultrasound, and it is, and, and, and you're pregnant, and it's not of the Holy Spirit. I'm not talking about a, a, a natural pregnancy. I'm talking about, about something that you received from the enemy, a seed from the enemy, and it's been growing inside of you. If that's you this morning, and you know exactly who you are, because this desire's been growing, and the desire's filled with, with, a, with a plan of the, of the enemy, and, and, and uh, I, I just want you to invite Jesus just to come, and I want you just to give that thing to the Lord. That is not of the Lord, and just give it to him, because it's almost like, it's almost like the, the, if, if you give birth to this thing, if you see it through, it's, it's, it, 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 the, it's not even about you, it's a plan to come after your children to completely sabotage the identity and destiny of your children. And I need, I need for you to hear what the Spirit is saying this morning, that the enemy is using you to get to your children. And so you have to, you have to see that you're not dumb, but you've, 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 received, you've, you've received a spirit that is not wise, it's foolishness, and it leads to disaster. Let's pray for a second. Spirit come, spirit come. Spirit come, spirit come, reveal, 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 spirit of truth, spirit of truth, come, 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 spirit of truth, come right now, come right now. You're not going to throw away your marriage, you're not going to throw away your, your job, you're not going to throw away your finances, you're not going to throw this life away. No, 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 I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans to give you a future and, and a hope. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, this identity destiny suicide i break the power of that right now in jesus name i break the power of that right now this spiritual suicide you are a spirit you are a demon you're not of the holy spirit whoa right now right now fire on that ugly thing fire right now on that ugly thing fire right now on that ugly thing thank you lord 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Break the power of it, Lord. Hold out your hands in, in, in front of you. I'll lead us just through like a, a real simple prayer of repentance. And then if, if you feel peace about it, you can pray with me. If, if you're not feeling it, that's totally cool, okay? Let's pray, Jesus. 
I repent for any ways I've advocated my authority as a father, as a mother, as a leader, as a steward on the earth. I know that you created me. I know that you have called me. I don't know all the details. I might not even know my assignment. But I know that you've created me for this time, for this place. So Jesus, I say yes to this great responsibility to love you, to love people, and to love this earth. I'm going to need your love. I'm going to need your love. Come and fill my heart with your love, with love for you and love for each other. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Hey, God bless you. We went into overtime today, but listen, if you need, if you need prayer for anything, um, we'd love to just to invite you just to come to the front. Our prayer ministry team would love to, to pray with you, to stand with you. Don't feel like you have to leave. Uh, love you, you guys. Have an amazing week, okay? Blessings.